first day that feels like the cold is gone. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. I want to uh, welcome you to church this morning. And for those that are watching us from home, welcome to church. It's time to worship our King, our Lord. This morning, we just want to thank Him for His grace. His grace has brought us thus far. It's His grace that brought us here. It's because of His grace that we are standing. It's because of His grace that we are alive. It's because of His grace that we came out stronger. We came out wiser. We, we came out stronger. It's what the enemy meant for evil. He turned it around by His grace. And we, we are standing as overcomers. We are standing victorious. Lord, we thank You. We're not, we're not taking any of Your benefits or mercy or grace for granted. We thank You, Lord, for Your grace this morning. We thank You for Your grace. Your grace that saved us. Your grace that delivered us. Your grace that continues to sustain us. Thank You, Lord, for Your grace. Thank You, Lord, for Your grace. Somebody I want to thank you for His grace this morning. If grace has found you, if grace has saved you, if grace has delivered you, lift your voice this morning and just give Him praise for it. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you, Lord. Your grace translated us from the kingdom of darkness into your marvelous light. We thank you for your grace, oh God. Thank you for your grace, oh God. Thank you for your grace, oh God. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We thank you. We cannot thank you enough. Our words cannot be. There's no word that can capture what you've done for us. So we magnify you. We exalt you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
send our fame, a son and daughter, the king of glory, the king of glory, who rules the nation with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance, the king of glory, the king of all kings, so we say, this is amazing grace. Father, we worship you in this place today, Lord. Without your grace, oh God, where would we be? Without your love, oh God, where would we be, Lord? And so we just take a moment to reflect that if it wasn't for your grace, God, we would not even be this far. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your grace. We wouldn't be gathered together as one, worshiping and praising you and giving you all the adoration if it wasn't for your grace. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. T'was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear. Believed my chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. 
Chains finding me. The chains have been broken. The chains have been broken. I am no longer bound. For God, you have set me free. Oh, yeah. The Lord has promised. Good to me, he's worth my hope, secures, he will my shield and portion me, as long as life and your Just alive, but I'm there. It's a 
your testimony. I need you to survive. But I'm better. I'm not just alive. I'm not just alive. sits upon the circle of Yola. We bless your name this morning, Jesus. We honor your name this morning, Jesus. We hallow your name this morning, Jesus. We declare you are worthy, worthy to be glorified, worthy to be magnified, worthy to be exalted. Thank you, our Father and our God. Thank you, our King and our Redeemer. Thank you, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the great I am that I am, the one who sits upon the circle of the old We honor your name this morning, Jesus. We bow our nails before you. Be glorified. Be magnified. Be exalted. Thank you, Jesus, son of the living God. We say hallelujah unto your name, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Be seated. I'm excited this morning. I don't know about you. I am excited. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said, told me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This morning, I am glad. I am grateful for the opportunity to be alive. I want to thank God for who you are what God is doing in your life and what God will do through you and for you and everything that God has in stock for you. 
not just this morning, but for the rest of your life. Amen. Uh, it's two weeks away from resurrection. I want to share a message this morning that I titled God's Post Resurrection Invitation. And what is that invitation? Be a difference maker. Amen. To be a difference maker. So let us bow our heads this morning as we pray. Father, we welcome you into this assembly this morning. We give you praise, we give you glory. We honor your name, we hallow your name. Thank you for who you are. Lord, we come this morning under the authority of your word. I pray, Lord, that you will open our eyes to see. You will open our ears to hear. You will open our hearts to understand and to discern spiritual truth. I pray that by reason of the word, our bodies will be healed, our mind renewed, our emotions contained, our will surrendered, and we will never be the same again. Amen and amen. The first thing that I want to say to you this morning is that you need to stop seeing yourself through the lens of your past, and you need to start seeing yourself through the lens of resurrection. And what does that lens say? That lens says that you are redeemed, that you are renewed, and that you are empowered to make a difference. Amen? That lens of resurrection says about you that you are redeemed, that you are renewed, and that you are empowered to make a difference. Praise the name of the Lord somebody. Now, I want us to look at Second, Second Corinthians this morning, chapter 5. We're going to do 14 to 19. I'm going to read it in New King James, and then I'm going to read it in the message and translation. Amen? Second Corinthians chapter 5, 14 to 19 says, For the love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus, that if one die for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Let me repeat that. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh at the point in time, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word or the ministry of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ. As though God we are pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, president of the Lord. Wow. We see, we, 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 we see no man moving on from here any longer after the flesh. I love that. I love that. And I pray that God will help us to unpack that this morning. But let me read it to you very quickly in message translation. In message translation, it says, uh, from verse 14, our firm decision is to walk from this focus center. One man, one man died for everyone. That puts everyone in the same boat. He included everyone in his death so that everyone could also be included in his life, a resurrection life, a far better life than people ever lived on their own. Because of this decision, we don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. <laughs> because of resurrection, we don't evaluate people by how, what they have or how they look. We look at the Messiah. We looked at the Messiah that way once and got it all wrong. As you know, 
we certainly don't look at him that way anymore. Now we look inside in the spirit realm. And what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah get a fresh start. It's created new. The old thing, the old life is gone. A new life emerges. Look at it. All this comes from God who settled the relationship between us and Him. <laughs> All this comes from who? From God who settled the relationship between us and him and then call us to settle our relationship with each other. <laughs> but God put the world squarely with him through the Messiah. That is God put the world right through the Messiah. Giving the world, everyone, man and woman, young and old, a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sin. God has given us the task, though, of telling one, of telling everyone what he has done. We are Christ's representative. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. We are speaking for Christ himself now. Become friends with God. He is already a friend with you. <laughs> I love the way Blessed kind of put this together. He said, become friends with God. God is already a friend with you. Now, I'm sure we all know that in the journey of life, just as it is in the journey of, of, of faith, perception plays a, a profound role. It plays a profound role in our journey of life and in the way we see things around us, how we see ourselves, how we see others, and the world around us shapes our attitude, it shapes our decisions, and it shapes our relationship. It is important to recognize that as believers, God is calling us this morning to start seeing with our spiritual eyes, to start perceiving life through the lens of God's truth and wisdom. Why? Why? Why is God calling us to that? Because your perception determines your reality. Your perception determines your reality. And because your perception determines your real reality, we all now need to start seeing through the lens of Christ's victory, not through the lens of our limitation. We need now to start seeing us, life, everything around us, through that victory that God gave to Jesus Christ on the cross. Because the Bible says that because of him, we, all of you, all of us, we are more than conquerors. Not because of who we are, not because of our education, I mean league or whatever. Because of Christ, we are more than conquerors, regardless of what is going on in your world. You know, I have this saying that God is not limited by my limitation. God is not limited by my problem. God is not limited by my situation. God is not limited by my challenges. Regardless of what you are going through, what I am going through, God is still God. Regardless of how tough life is, how difficult life is, it doesn't change who God is. Our God is God, regardless. <laughs> and then, you see, if we can catch that this morning, it will help to define how you see life. Because ultimately, I know that whatever you are going through right now will change. Snow and what's it called? Winter in Minnesota does not remain forever, right? As much as winter wants to remain forever, it will give way. Amen? It will give room to spring. And as much as I love spring and I want spring to remain, it will give room to, to, to summer. And then, summer will give, give room to autumn or fall. Amen? That, that is the way it's supposed to be. That is the way life is. The Bible says that as long as the, the, as that remains, seed time and harvest, uh, and harvest, winter and summer will never see. In other words, there's always a circle of life going on around, around us. If you hang on long enough, you will
will see the victory. If you hold up long enough, you will receive the victory. If you don't give up, if you don't give it, ultimately, whatever it is that is pushing against you will have to give up. A man of God told me, he said, Pastor, he said, whatever is not able to kill you will ultimately have to leave you. <laughs> I love that. He said, whatever is not able to kill you will ultimately have to leave you alone. I can't kill Tony, so let's leave Tony alone. Amen. I can't handle Tony, so let's leave Tony alone. Amen. Whatever cannot kill you, is not able to kill you, will ultimately have to leave you alone. Praise the name of the Lord, somebody. So, Paul is telling us this morning of a need for a radical shift in our perception. Amen. And that radical shift is brought about by our encounter with Jesus Christ. Amen. That radical shift that Paul is speaking about, talking about, that he spoke about in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, was brought about by, or and is brought about by your encounter with Jesus Christ. Before Christ, our perception of who we are and of life was limited. And it was limited by what we stand up. It was limited by our education. It was limited by our environment. It was limited by the friends or your, you know, your offspring in general. Our perception about us, who we are, what we could do or who we could become, was limited based on your background or geography. But Paul is trying to get us to understand that but now, now that we have received Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior, that your perception can no longer be limited, should no longer be limited to who you were before now, but to who God wants you to be now. What God wants you to, who God wants you to be moving forward, and what God wants you to accomplish for Him moving forward. Now, imagine a, 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 a stained glass window illuminated by light. When the, the, the light shines through, it transforms the ordinary pieces of glass into a breathtaking display of color and beauty. Amen? And it's the same thing with God, with what God did with yourself and myself. That the moment we encounter Jesus, illumination happened. Amen? The Christ illuminated our life, transforming our perception from darkness to light, from being fleshly. To be spiritual. That's why the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. In the physical, no. In the spiritual, in the spiritual, you are a new creature. All things are passed away, and all things have become new. Amen. Now we see that in the life of Paul. Paul, at a point in time, was called Saul, but he experienced transformation in the book of Acts on the on the road to Damascus. On the road to Damascus, he had what some refer to as a Damascus Road experience with Jesus Christ. He had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And in an instant, his perception was radically transformed, leading to a complete change of heart and purpose. He went from persecuting Christians to proclaiming the gospel boldly. Why? All because he encountered Christ and began to see it with his spiritual eyes. So this morning, my desire is to help us to come to that place where we also are able to leave behind that old way of thinking, that old way of looking at life, that old way of looking at ourselves, to start now looking at ourselves the way that God created you originally. Amen? Originally. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and I ordained you to be a prophet. In other words, every single one of us here, that the life that God wants us to live is already cast in stone. It's already cast in stone. God is just saying, I now need you, because of this new lens, to discover or rediscover who you truly are. A new perspective. One definition of perspective by Webster is 
a particular attitude, a particular attitude toward a way of regarding something or a, a, a particular attitude toward or a way of regarding something. Amen. In other words, a point of view. Another way of looking at it is to say, when we talk about your perspective, we are talking about your outlook on life. We are talking about your point of view on something, about something, or about a person. We are talking about your position, your health position, about a person or a something, your attitude, your frame of mind, your frame of reference, your approach to something, your way of looking at things, or your way of thinking about things. Your way of looking at things or your way of thinking about things. And God is calling yourself and myself this morning to change our perspective. Change our perspective about what? Number one, change your perspective about people. <laughs> change our perspective about what? Change our perspective about people. Change your perspective about yourself and change your perspective about God. Let's take the word for people. Change your perspective about people. Paul said, Paul said, henceforth, we know no man after the flesh. I say, Bralare now. I say, Bralare in the physical. But the point is that, ladies and gentlemen, for me to truly know who Bralare is and what God is doing through him. Where he, where he is, where he is from. Somebody said, you cannot really judge a person unless you have walked in their shoes. Amen? That if you don't know where a man or a woman is coming from, if you don't know what ails them, what has brought them to where they are this morning, judging them may actually be an error because you really don't know the story. You don't know the story of their life. That was why Jesus Christ said, do not judge. Do not judge. Why? Because you don't have the full story. You don't have the full story. And therefore, trying to judge the situation at times, you may be in error because you really don't know the full story. He said, henceforth, no we no man after the flesh. We can't just focus on the physical, the man, the woman. If we do that, we probably will be making a big mistake. I can't remember whether it was Minister John who shared something with us a while back. Uh, imagine uh, somebody coming to church and uh, all, um, um, uh, what's the word, all walked up and, uh, you know, stepping on everybody's toes in the process. And then you are wondering, what is wrong with me? What is wrong? What's going on with me? You know what I'm trying to say? And if you if guys not taken, we all start judging the person like left and center willy nilly. And only to find out that I don't know, something major just happened. He, he maybe even on his way to church or maybe over the weekend and he's walked up on account of what just happened. But we don't have a clue, we don't know. But all we see is the actions. What all we see is what he or she is doing right now in our in our immediate vicinity, and we are all judging. And say, what, what what's wrong with him? What when is when is he going to wake up? When is he going? To, and, and, and it's very easy to do stuff like that. And, and you know why it is easy? Because many times we ourselves we are going through our own stuff, and because we are going through our own stuff, we don't really want to tolerate another person coming in to make a mess or add to the mess that we are already dealing. I'm already dealing with my issue, and then you are bringing your own. I don't have time for you. Have you, have you said that before? That I don't have time for you right now. And the reason why I don't have time for you right now is because I'm dealing with my own stuff, and I don't need you to come out of my own stuff. I'm going to come to that in a minute. The second thing that I want us to understand is that God is saying, now, because of resurrection, because you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you now need to look at yourself differently. You are not an accident waiting to happen anymore. 
You are no longer an average of blood. You are a spirit man and mastering the human experience. That's who you are. You are a spirit man now mastering the human experience. You are more than the sum total of your physical life, your age, your education, or whatever it is that you have. You are much more than that. What is beneath you and the iceberg principle, what is beneath is bigger, greater, more profound than whatever anybody can see about you in the physical. What is beneath you? What many of us cannot figure out, what many of us cannot fathom, is much more than what we see in the physical. But we all need to understand that about ourselves. We are not defeated. We are not a bunch of defeated people. We carry ourselves that way at times because we think we have been going through this thing for too long. But that is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to make us a bunch of defeated people who don't think highly of themselves, who see themselves as a whiners all the time. But we need to wake up one day and realize that regardless of the pain, regardless of the issue, regardless of the challenges, regardless of the difficulty, our God is still on the throne. Amen? Jesus is still on the throne. He's still God, whether you believe it or not. He rose again from the dead, regardless of whether you receive it or not. Amen? Somebody said, God is God and he doesn't need your opinion. But what Pastor Randy, who, is, who always say, will say that. He said, God is God, and he doesn't need your opinion. Your opinion don't count. It don't count. Amen. <laughs> Whether you believe he is God doesn't make any difference. He's still God. We need to change that perception about, our, about, about people. We need to change that perception about ourselves. And then we need to change that perception about God. Why? Because God is not your enemy. We need to start seeing God as a friend. Amen? We need to start seeing God as a and with God. We need to start seeing God as my friend. Remember what God said about Abraham? He said, Abraham, my friend. He said, will I hide this thing that I am about to do? Will I hide it from Abraham, my friend? Who is a friend of God here? We are, listen, we all sing that song, I am a friend of God. Yeah, that's exactly who we are. But then we need to start acting like him. Amen. Am I right, sir? We need to start acting like him that we are a friend of God. We need to stop being enamored by this physical world. That we are here today, we are gone tomorrow. And, and hello, may I announce, announce to you that you have eternity yet to spend with God in the spirit realm. Put it this way. He said, whatever it is that you are doing now, the life that you are living now, is actually preparing you for eternity. Amen? The life you are living, the life I am living, the life we are all living is preparing us for eternity. Where are you going to end it? Where are you going to spend it? Are you going to spend it with Christ? Are you going to spend it in the lake somewhere? You know the lake I'm talking about. <laughs> Put the other one there, make up something. <laughs> are you going to spend it with Christ? Are you going to spend it in the lake? <laughs> yeah, we need to start, we need to change that perception about God. God is not our enemy. It doesn't matter what you are going through, it doesn't matter what the enemy is going through. You see, at times it's also very vitally important for us to understand the fact that. Even though we all say that God knows everything, God sees everything, true. But it's also important for all of us to understand that Satan is still the God of this world. Amen? That is why Jesus Christ came and while he was here on earth, he kept saying, repent. Because the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We are have been called, yourself and myself, we have been called to go push that God mandate and God, that God agenda that every
everywhere we step into, everywhere we get to, that we implement that God agenda, the kingdom of God manifest here on earth. Until that happens, Satan is not the God of this world. Until we get to that place, until we are able to implement that God mandate, that God agenda, Satan is still the head of this world. So another thing that God wants us to start looking at and what he wants us to look at differently this morning, he wants us to have a new reality. A new reality. What do I mean by that? A new reality that suggests to yourself and myself that life is no longer one-dimensional. That life is no longer one-dimensional. That whatever it is that you are looking at right now, don't stop there. Don't stop just looking at whatever it is in the physical. We need to start asking ourselves this question. What is the spiritual implication of what I am seeing and what is going on? What is the spiritual implication of what I am seeing? What is going on? We need to start asking ourselves that question. We need to stop seeing things only one that only only the physical. We need to stop that. We can't just base everything in, in our life, around us, in our family, whatever it is that we have been called to. It cannot just be based on what we see in the physical. Paul was telling us in Ephesians chapter 6. That we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities and power, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual hosts of deep darkness in heavenly places. I say to you that whatever you see happening in the physical in your life already took place in the spirit realm. Whatever problems I have right now, whatever issues I have right now, whatever challenges I have right now, is as a result of what happened in the in the, in the, in the spiritual and because of that I think it brings a new sense of urgency to yourself and myself in how we look at life that we no longer should just look at things our life and just focus on what we see now oh life is good now I have a good job now I have a great car now I have a, I, I don't have to go to the uh, to the auto, auto, auto mechanic shop all the time our life no don't, don't just base it on that because, hey, let me announce to you, something may actually be happening in the spirit realm that may come in maybe a year later to affect the peace that you have right now. And that is why we all need to do stuff every day to prepare us to handle life in the spirit realm also. Call Christian disciplines. Stop life in the spirit realm through prayer, through fasting, through study of the word, through meditation on scripture. We can't just take life, case it, as it as. We have to be able to peel the layer from time to time and go back and just say, God, okay, God, what are you saying now about this thing? What are you saying now about that? Remember the story of Elisha in Second in Second Kings chapter six. The Bible says that Elisha, Elisha, and his servant were surrounded by an army, and Elisha prayed for his servant's eyes to be opened to see the mount to, to see the mountain filled with horses and chariots of fire representing the angelic army of God. In that moment, the perception of Elisha's servant shifted from fear to faith. Because now, they can see God, the angels of God, surrounding the mountains. God stretching forth his hand to say, I am with you. I am going to fight for you. I am going to protect you. I am going to give you the victory. This morning, I want you to know that in the battle of life, you are not fighting for victory. Amen. You are not doing what? You are not fighting for victory. You are fighting from victory. Empowered by 
Holy Spirit of God within you. You are fighting from victory. God has already given us the victory. He's not going to give us the victory tomorrow. He's already given us the victory now. As a matter of fact, he gave us the victory 2,000 years ago. You are only just going to implement it tomorrow. <laughs> we are not fighting to get victory. We are fighting from the position of victory because we have already been received the victory. Yourself and myself, we are only just working it out. We are working it out. We are working it out by our Christian discipline. We are working it out by, by our lifestyle of fasting and prayer, reading of the word, studying of the word, meditating on scripture, getting God's instruction and direction for whatever it is that you are going through. Having the peace of mind to be able to hold on even when everything around you is falling down. When everything around you is crumbling, to still have that peace of mind, to still be able to hold on and for people to look at you and say, how are you? He said, my peace I give to you. My peace I live with you. Not as this world gives. Peace that Jesus is talking about is peace in the midst of trouble. That is what understanding who God is in the other dimension in the spirit realm, understanding who you are in the spirit realm, Knowing how to deal with people around you in the spirit realm, that is what it does to you. It gives you peace. Everybody is pulling their hair out. I love this, uh, I love this advert. And every time I see advert like that, I say, okay, you are telling me it's time for hay fever, right? Okay. So there was this advert, and there was this big monster, the hay fever monster was coming at her, and it was going around, and everybody was scrambling, everybody was running, everybody was running because of this hay fever monster, but there was this guy who had this thing in his hand, and he would just look at everybody running, and I just did like this, and then he started to smile, <laughs> I love that hand that, and this almost looks like that, the devil is going, and, oh, 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 and then you just stand there, and you are just laughing, and you are just cool, and then, don't you see the devil is coming? You have a story of Smith Rigglesworth. Smith Rigglesworth shared his testimony once. He said, in the middle of the night, he had some rumblings in his house. He was upstairs in the bedroom. And then he came down. And when he came down, he saw something seated sit, sit on the chair. And then he looked and said, oh, it's only you, the devil. And then he went back to sleep. <laughs> Can you do that? You wake up and you see rumbling and you see chairs moving in your living room. Are you not going to run out? <laughs> Are you gonna, not going to run out or maybe call the cops and just say all the chairs, all, all the furniture in my, in my room there, in my, in my living room, in my, in my, in my, family, in my family room, they're all moving. Then as a believer, as a child of God, you come down and you see all of the mayhem and then you just smile and say, oh, the devil again. Have you been, have you been there? It happens to me from time to time. It may, I mean, I mean, I'm alone in the house, there's nobody with me, and then all of a sudden you just hear a sound, bah! like something like that, in the bedroom, upstairs, or, and I said, is somebody up there? <laughs> something is telling you, go check. <laughs> go check to see what makes that sound. But you know, God is my witness. I have come to the place these days that it doesn't even, it could be could be something that was moving slowly for a while. Maybe you left the bottle, you know, on the side, and the bottle is moving slowly and slowly and finally got to the edge of the table, and then the, the bottle falls to the ground and makes a noise, and then you're going to jump up and then you say, no, 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 I don't even do that anymore. Once I'm in bed, I don't care what the noise is, we'll deal with you tomorrow, okay? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. A new, a new way of looking at life, a new way of looking at things. Don't let politics stress you out. I, I, for the life of me, I don't understand why we have to fight each other on account of politics in this nation. I don't get it. And it's demonic. I 
I thought it was in Africa that they did do stuff like that, right? Where they rile people up and rile them up and rile them up and rile them up because of your agenda. We need to get out of that nonsense, man. A couple of my friends, we went out for dinner this last night. Uh, this guy's uh, Seven of us went, and uh, so we were we were having a uh, we were having a, a, a dinner, and uh, you know you know it was it was just beautiful, it was just beautiful, and then so all of a sudden the conversation turned to politics, and everybody had their own thing, and they said, oh yeah, we can. I said, I don't care. I said, as a matter of fact, I want the bad that everybody is afraid of to really happen. Because then we know who is the kind of God that we all serve. Amen? Are we going to be stressed out because somebody got into power and then all of a sudden we are no, no, nobody anymore? I really don't care. I don't need the government. Government don't, don't feed me. Right? Government don't feed us. We don't need the government. We don't need employer. We don't need our employer. Our employer don't provide for us. You know who provides for us? It is God. In the same way, it is not the government that provides for us. Guess what? If you don't show up for work, they will lose money also, right? How did we get into all of that? <laughs> okay, the second one is a new relationship, right? A new relationship. A new relationship. We now have a new relationship with God through Christ. You know, I have been having this debate in my mind. I have this debate. If you have not, not had that debate, uh, you know, every time that I am praying, that I don't stand that I am praying, I'm saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And then one day I started to have this thought. I said, is that really right? In the name of Jesus. Or should we be praying to God? I'm going to leave that to you, theologians. Okay, maybe next Bible study topic. Should we be praying to Jesus or should we be praying to God? Huh? We should be doing both, right? Okay. I don't know. I'm just asking. So I'm going to let you guys go figure it out. You know, this is the thought that came to my mind that we should pray, me, we should pray to God through Jesus. So, new relationship, new relationship with Christ, new relationship with people, amen, new relationship with Christ, new relationship with people. If it's not about what you see, it's about how you see it. We need to choose to see the world through the eyes of faith. We need to see people through the eyes of faith. Many of us, we are quick to write people off. We are quick to throw them away. We need to start seeing people through the eyes of faith. A new responsibility. What is that new responsibility? He said he has given us the ministry of reconciliation, right? I love that. I love that. Every one of us. God has given yourself and myself the ministry of reconciliation. But let me tell you. The, the, the big one, the one that I really want us to go home with this morning. That whenever I see somebody behaving out of character, whenever I see something going on with an individual, that I don't jump straight at my first instinct of, oh, so, 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 and so. But that I step back, I go back home, if, if, if that, if it would be take that. I go back home. I look at it. I pray to God. I ask 
God to open my eyes to give me insight to help me understand what A, B, C, D, and E is going through. So that when you come back next Sunday, that you will be able to reach out and touch that one individual in a different way. Can you imagine if you experience something one Sunday after service, and instead of saying anything, you go home, and then when you go home, you go to God in the place of prayer and ask God to open your eyes, to open your heart, to understand what is going on. And God dropped a word in your spirit concerning that one individual. And then you come back to church on Sunday and you share that with them. Say, if I was praying for you um, when I, after I got home on Sunday or during the week, this is what the Lord told me about you. Can you imagine what it would do to that individual? That is the new responsibility. That's the one I want us to move over to. A new way of looking at situations circumstance, not just jumping the gun. Even when you jump the gun, that you go back home and you go to God and ask God to tell you what really happened today. What really happened? What should I do now? And how should I handle it moving forward? It will change any church. It will change every church. It will change It's also vitally important to say that as believers, we are not to shy away from discipline if there's a need for discipline. We are not to shy away from confrontation if there's a need for confrontation. Because if the Holy Spirit tells you that X, Y, and Z is this, 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 because you just don't want to grow up, then you have some talking to do. The Holy Spirit is saying it's just that you don't want to grow up. You get what I mean? It does not mean we shy away from discipline. It does not mean we shy away from confrontation. It does not mean we shy away from any of those things. But it just means, ladies and gentlemen, that we first go to God, that we receive instruction and direction, insight about what it is that we are dealing with. Then we are able to deal with it from the point of view of God's whatever it is that He said about that individual. A new responsibility. Your responsibility isn't just to exist, it is to make a difference. So we all need to rise up to become the difference maker in our sphere of influence. And responsibility is not just to exist, it is to be a difference maker. And God is calling yourself and myself into a ministry of reconciliation. As I close, understand that new perspective, new reality, new relationship, or new responsibility isn't just about seeing with our spiritual eyes. It is about living in alignment with spiritual truths. It's not just about seeing with our spiritual eyes. It's, with, it's about living in alignment with spiritual truth. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The transformation that we are talking about begins, ladies and gentlemen, in your mind as we allow God's word to renew our thought and perspective. Amen. It will help us, ladies and gentlemen, to know what to do, how to do it, when to do it, so that God ultimately will be glorified. You will never get there if you do not submit and surrender yourself to God's discipline, God taking you to the grind, God, you know, um, you taking time to, to do the hard work of preparing yourself in the spirit, preparing your spirit, growing your, your spirit man, meditating on scripture, prayer, fasting, amen, studying the word. Nobody grows without any doing any of those things. Listen, the things of God don't just happen. Nobody just become an anointed man of God. Oops, I just became an anointed man of God. It doesn't happen. 
It doesn't happen. Even when you have the grace, if you don't build on it, build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, whatever it is that God has invested in you, if you don't spend time to develop it, it will not be beneficial to any man or any woman. Amen, somebody. So, as we celebrate second Sunday after resurrection, my, 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 my desire and my prayer is for all of us to leave this place today knowing that God has given us, yourself and myself, a new perspective, giving us a new reality, amen, giving us, ladies and gentlemen, a new responsibility, a new responsibility that we recognize that he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Myself and Pastor Jenner, we were looking at something recently, and one of the things that struck me about what we were looking at is the fact that he mentioned something about justice and racial reconciliation. That one of the things that they focus on as a group is justice and racial reconciliation. And ladies and gentlemen, anywhere you go in the whole world, you will see a world in discord and disharmony. Anywhere in the world you go to. It could be the airport. It could be driver. You see it everywhere. And church of God in that country Nobody was judged, nobody was condemned, but everybody was given an opportunity to come and confess. I'm sorry, I did this, I did this, I ought not to have done it. I am sorry. And that just brought about healing. The fact that this one man that dealt with me so badly would come out and say it out, take away the shame and whatever it is that comes with that. strongly, passionately in my heart that that is what God wants us to do in this community. We may not, we are not there yet, Mother, we may not be there yet. We are only just scratching the surface. Amen? We are only just scratching the surface. I believe passionately in my heart that for God has allowed us to go through the pain and everything that we went through to renovate this building, to renovate this building, and the, and the, and the price tag that we did it when in our bank account that he allowed us to spend close to three million three and something just to renovate this building. That's something that God wants to do. God is not a God is not God is not no work that way. I believe that my prayer, my heart desire, I don't know how many years I, I have on you know on, on this platform on, on this level, but my heart desire is that this ministry will continue. Amen. This ministry will continue and it will fulfill the purposes and the plan of God in this community. It will. This building to become a lighthouse in this community. Amen? A place that people can come to. A place that people are able to come into and receive support, receive support, receive encouragement so that they'll be able to move on and be all that God has created them to be. Amen? Ladies and gentlemen, the true church, God, the, the, the world is waiting for the true church. The world is waiting for the you know one of the things that the Holy Spirit told me on my way to church this morning, and not to knock you guys Washington member, the Holy Spirit told me that the church today that we see all over the world, go back and look at it again, it is mirrored after the, the worship, the desire to worship and all of those things. We want to do music, we want to do worship, and then we have smoke, whatever, what they call that, the smoke thing, the thing that, uh, uh, what's, what's it called? The, the thing that blows smoke. Ladies and gentlemen, if you go to university to study, okay, the same way that they have been teaching students since the zero hundred is the same way that they are still teaching them today. You go.
drop your school, you sit in the classroom, the professor comes to the hall, and he lectures you, gives you instruction, gives you direction, and they go home. And everybody is still going to school tomorrow then. They are still going to go to get their BSc and Masters and all of those things tomorrow. But in the church, we think we need to change the order. We didn't think we need to change the way we do church so that the people will come. Something is missing in that picture in that room. I don't know what it is, but God will help us. Over emphasis on church, you ask yourself, am I in a church? I don't like going there. Then I have to go there this morning, and I let's rise up to our feet this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise to you. Give you glory, Lord. some prayer points this morning. We're going to do some prayer points this morning. It's good to have Minister Mary back, right? Yeah. It's good to have Minister Mary back. Hallelujah. So, uh, we want to take communion, but the way we are going to do it, but before we do it, I want us to uh, go to God this morning very quickly. And just take some prayer point now. If you need this prayer point, it's on the uh, on our devotional WhatsApp page. It's on our devotional WhatsApp page. Uh, we are going to we are going to do a couple of uh, uh, maybe about two or three of them, and then uh, we are going to uh, you know uh, part, uh, partake of the communion. The first one that I want us to look at is what I call gratitude for Christ's sacrifice. Amen. Gratitude for Christ's sacrifice. As we come together this morning. I want us all just to thank God for the love demonstrated. The Bible says that while we were sinners, that Christ died for the ungodly. Amen. That God sent his only begotten son to die for yourself and myself, even while we were sinners. So let us just come before him and let us thank him this morning. Let us say, Father, we thank you. We bless you. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory this morning. Lord, the Bible makes us to understand in John 3.16 that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Lord, we want to thank you for the price that was paid for our redemption. We want to thank you for the price that was paid on my God to help change our perception, to change our reality. To change our focus on Mary God, to change our responsibility on Mary God, we want to let you know, Father God, that we are grateful. Thank you, my Father and my God, for this price that was paid for every man and every woman, every boy and every girl. Let your name be glorified this morning. Let your name be magnified this morning. Let your name be exalted this morning. We honor you. We bless you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We say hallelujah unto your name, Lord Jesus. Let your name be glorified, magnified, and exalted. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible makes us to understand that we are not to be conformed to this world, but to be tra- uh, but to, we are not to be conformed, but to be transformed by the renewal of our mind. Let us pray this morning for a renewed mind. Amen. Let us ask God to help us to see ourselves and others through the lens of resurrection rather than through past mistakes or worldly standards. Our Father and our God, I pray for your people this morning that you will help us to renew our mind. Lord, I pray, Father God, that you will help us moving on from here to have a new perspective on Mary God, on everything that is going on around us. Help us to see others through the lens of resurrection rather than through their past mistakes or worldly standard. In the mighty name of Jesus, you have done it before. You will do it again. Do it for your people this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Now, in John chapter 4, verse 8, the Bible makes us to understand. 
draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your heart, you sinner, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Let us pray for deeper intimacy with God through Christ, asking for a greater understanding of his love and friendship. Let us pray for a deeper intimacy with God through Christ, asking for a greater understanding of his love and friendship in the mighty name of Jesus, our Father and our God. We pray this morning for every man and every woman for a deeper intimacy with you, Almighty God, through Christ, Almighty God. Deeper love, Almighty God. Your word says we are to love, uh, 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 we are to love our uh, uh, God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, and we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, help us to live that, Almighty God. Help us to be that one person, Almighty God. Help us to get to that place, Father God. We are indeed. We are able to love you with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul. Where we are also able to love our neighbors as, as ourselves. Is there anything standing in the way of us being able to be that person? Lord, whether it is sin or whatever it may be, Lord, we pray that you will take it away this morning. That you will take it away this morning. Take away every weight that so easily beset. beset. Take away, Almighty God, every stum stum stumbling block. Take away every barrier. Take away every hindrance. Take away every limitation. Take away anything and everything that is standing in the way of all being, of us being whom you have created us to be, Almighty God. A man and a man and a woman after God's own heart. Lord, take those things away. Take those obstacles away. Take those barriers away. Take those limitations away. Help us today to love you with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our responsibility. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you glory. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Let us ask God for strength and wisdom to fulfill the ministry of reconciliation. Be agent of peace and healing in a broken uh, world and in, in, in broken relationship. My Father and my God will receive the strength, will receive the wisdom, will receive the enablement, will receive the power, will receive the ability of Mighty God to indeed in fulfill the ministry of reconciliation that you have given to us of Mighty God. Help us to be agents of peace, agents of love, agents of joy, agents of Mighty God. He bringing healing into broken relationship, into broken life, helping people to mend their life, helping people to move from nowhere to somewhere, helping people to move from zero to hero, helping people to move from being stuck in the muddy clay to the place where they now are standing upon the solid rock. We know you are able to do it. You have done it before. You will do it again. Do it for your people, Almighty God. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be magnified. Let your name be exalted. In Jesus' mighty, powerful, majestic name, we have prayed him. Amen. The Bible says on the same night that he was crucified. Now, the easiest way to get at the, at the communion cup is to remove the clear film. You will see the clear film. Remove the clear film. You will get at the wafer. And then you can remove the purple covering. And then you get at the juice. Amen. The Bible says that on the same night, that he was crucified, that he took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them, to his disciples, and he said to them, eat, all of you, this is my body, which is broken for you, let us eat together this morning. The Bible says that in the same way, he took the cup after supper. He lifted it up. And he said to them, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink from it, all of you. Let us drink together this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We honor your name and we hallow your name. Paul said, as often as we do this, we proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. But I believe we proclaim his resurrection also. 
to Lord tonight we proclaim your death which paid the price for our sin and we proclaim your resurrection which gave us a new life access into the spirit realm power to be children of God the ability to be able to do what we've never been able to do before the grace to be able to move forward regardless of obstacles and barriers I receive that for every man and every woman this morning that your name will be glorified that your name will be magnified in Jesus mighty name we have prayed make a joyful noise unto the Lord all you land this morning Hallelujah, Father, we give you praise, we give you glory. You may be seated. You may be seated. We're going to do, we're going to do our, our, our covenant giving very quickly. Covenant giving. We're going to do our covenant giving. Our covenant, your covenant giving is whatever you have covenanted to give to God. Whatever you have covenanted to give to God. As I got into church this morning, I gave my covenant giving. I don't need to wait for pastor to say it's time for your covenant giving. I already gave my covenant giving. As a matter of fact, there are some times that I give my covenant giving on Saturday. I remember and then I'll give my covenant giving very quickly. I don't need to wait until I come on Sunday. Amen. So, but your covenant giving is whatever it is that you have covenanted to give to God. And the way I like to put it is that it is better to give with a cheerful heart than to give grudgingly. If giving 10% means you are giving grudgingly, don't give to God. If 10% means you are giving grudgingly, don't give it to God. But if 20% means you are giving cheerfully, then give it to God. Amen? That is the standard for giving. Give cheerfully, not grudgingly. Not of necessity. Nobody is impressing on anybody to give this money. Okay? Nobody is forcing anybody to give this money. Paul said, not grudgingly. Not of necessity. He said, but the Lord loves a cheerful giver. I love that. He <laughs> said, don't give grudgingly. Don't give because of you are seeking man's approval. Don't do that. He said, but give cheerfully. Amen. As you do that this morning, I pray that the Lord will bless you. The best way to give is to text your giving to 84321. That's the best way to give. And if you need an envelope, uh, lift up your hand or let the ushers know or on your way out uh, give your gift to them, they will receive it. You can write your check Ask for an envelope, they will give that to you. If you are giving online, uh, uh, you can go to Regents Assembly uh, church center.com slash giving. And if you need to write your check, you write it out. And you don't have to speak in tongues, amen. thousand you don't need an S, okay? Whether it's one thousand or two thousand, you don't need an S. Hallelujah. Lord, I want to thank you for the giving of your people this morning. The Bible says, Give and it shall be given to us full measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Will men give it to our bosom? Let the floodgates of heaven be open. Pour out a blessing upon us. Let your name be glorified and magnified. Lord, bless the giving of your people. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let's rise up to our feet this morning. We're going to bring the meeting to a close. <coughs> Let's rise up to our feet. Or should we continue? Is it okay to continue? And uh, we'll continue tomorrow during prayer meeting. By the way, 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we pray 6 to 7 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we pray on Zoom. I'm talking about people like again. Do we have to come here? No, we pray on Zoom. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 6 to 7 p.m. If you want to participate in that, please connect with one, one, one of our members. They will let you know. Uh, actually, the information is right there. We call it revival prayer. We pray for ourselves. We pray for our family. We pray for uptown. This is, this, this is our Jerusalem right here. We pray for uptown. Believe in God for a change and a turnaround in uptown. And God's purposes and plan are will be done in uptown. Amen. And then, you know, six to seven is for one hour. Boom, boom, boom. We are done. And then we can, you can go and have dinner after that. Amen. <coughs> and praise the name of the Lord. And uh, every, every, uh, every, I think it's every uh, first Thursday, Friday, Saturday of the month. We do a three-day uh, prayer and fasting, and then on Saturday at 10 a.m. in the morning, we come to church at 10 a.m. on Saturday, the first Saturday of the month. We come to church at 10 a.m., and then we pray from 10 a.m. to 12. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe without any shadow of doubt, everything hangs on prayer. Everything. If we are not seeing the result yet, keep praying. Remember what Bishop Bichola said? He said, what prayer cannot do, more prayer will do. Amen. <laughs> Whatever prayer you are praying right now, if you cannot do it, more prayer will do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to thank you for coming. Uh, it looks like some of us traveled today. That's okay. We welcome you back tomorrow. I will give, and next Sunday we'll give you a hug. Amen. Let's share the grace together by saying the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you for coming. God bless you real good.